you know, here's what I'm going to do for the short term. And then, you know, I'm going to make a commitment to this because in the long term, my objective is that I, I own the attention in this space and I own the conversation so that when somebody wants to have a conversation about B2B sales technology, they're going to come to me or when I do call them, they're already going to know who I am and it'll be a simple conversation to do business with me. So, uh, you know, we're in this era of now where it's like, you got to start thinking for the long term because the sales reps who don't think for the long term, they will only be here for the short term or their life's going to be miserable playing the short term game. With yeah. Trying to beat everybody else who's, who's you know, invested two, three years into a podcast and building a personal brand and going to events and speaking and doing all that stuff. Love that, man. I mean, Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. That was Jack Kozakowski you just heard, and I'm your host, Joe Lemon. And you know what? It's been it's been a busy time, I gotta say. So one one really exciting announcement that I have for you guys is that I'll be the podcast host for the DigiMarcon conference coming up here in California. So there's gonna be one going on in San Francisco. That's on May 23rd and 24th. And there's another one back in L.A. on June 5th and 6th. If you guys aren't familiar with the DigiMarcon conference, it's obviously digital marketing. Um, It's one of of those road shows that they do where they travel. I think think he does about 10 cities here in the U.S. and another uh, 10 outside the country as well. They're based out of Australia. So I was really glad to link up with those guys last year. Built on that type of built on that relationship, and um, yeah, they asked me to come back and actually host a host the podcast. So if you guys are going to that conference, I'll definitely check you out there. Check out the tickets; I'll have the links in the show notes. But today's guest is man, Jack is like a heavy hitter in the industry when it comes to social selling. So he's definitely blazed the trail. He's been doing this for so long. I mean, ten plus years, I believe. He's one of the, one of the pioneers when it comes to it. So he challenged me to think about my strategy around social selling. Everybody wants to know how do you kind of generate revenue through your social media accounts? Especially if you're in that B2B space, you're not doing a simple transaction or you can't just have a buy button on your Instagram. But how do you translate your efforts about building content into something that's going to hit the bottom line? So that's the, that's the stuff that we get into today. We co- uncover a lot of those strategies, having a short term versus long term play, which um, a lot of people don't talk about the actual short term strategy, but you got to have one. Because if you're a brand new business or if you're brand new into sales, um, you have to have quotas that you meet quarterly or at least every six months, if not monthly or weekly. So, you know, there has to be a short term play, but there also needs to be a broader conversation, a much longer term uh, strategy that you're gearing up towards and, and working and building content around. And so we also talk about the art of retargeting. So this is a big deal if you're spending any ad dollars on social media just how do you maximize them how do you get people to bounce back to your website inputting pixels properly we get into the weeds this is stuff that i feel like everybody should be doing if you're spending a cent on any type of ad dollars online so retargeting is major and we he even throws out um we have a cool conversation around the future of b2b and voice technology interesting opinion from him i'll let him share it so let's dive into it sit back and enjoy this Man, you've you've really done a lot for this whole sales and social selling type of industry, man. Um, especially when it comes to the whole future of sales, man. There's all these articles and like research that came out almost about four or five years ago saying how B2B sales is gonna be dead. It's gonna look different in about a whole year, twenty twenty. And um, I gotta say, man, you've really kind of leaded the whole charge of really how this is gonna evolve and really try to look differently. So um, man, I'm I'm really kinda pumped to kind of talk to you today, man. Yeah, I'll take, well, I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, three years ago, you know, if you would have told me that my prediction was right, um, I would have told you it was going to be, but I don't think very many other people would have. So it's kind of fun to see all the people that used to laugh at me and tell me that I'm doing, you know, I'm ruining sales by talking about this stuff and, you know, this stuff doesn't work. You know, now that you see, I'm seeing these people take my courses and, <laughs> you know, ask me right. for advice. Uh, you know, it makes it all worth it when you're putting your uh, putting your reputation on the line for a while. <laughs> 100%, man. I mean, man, so if you can kind of take us back a little bit so we can kind of just understand your whole origin story a little bit. I mean, how was it back then? I mean, this is what, how long ago did you actually start this whole social selling movement and everything? Oh, man. So, you know, four, four or five years ago is when I kind okay. of like, you know, I had a light bulb that, 
you know, I just saw what was going on um, slowly with LinkedIn. And then I just kind of saw slowly what was happening with Facebook and Twitter and how things were kind of evolving, you know, into everything has become a sales conversation, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's well, actually everything's become a conversation online that if you're strategic about it um, and, and you do it with the right people, it turns into a sales conversation. So there's like this whole like, um, you know, push pull thing. Like it used to be like with sales is, you know, you got, you had to interrupt somebody's day to, you know, to get into a sales conversation. Right. I mean, there was like no other yeah. option. And then I started to just see this vision of like, well, you know, there's all these people doing um, all these exciting things and there's so many ways to become an advocate for somebody um, to help somebody else, you know, personally and professionally by sharing an article or talking about them or, um, you know, feeding them information. And like, there's just all these more organic um, ways to do something over time that would lead you into a targeted conversation with somebody that would actually want to have a conversation with you. Because I think that's what I've always um, struggled with in sales early in my career is why I'm having all these conversations with people who don't want to have a conversation with me. You know, it's like going to a bar and like, you know, uh, you know when a girl does not want to talk to you, right? And <laughs> that never feels good. It's the same way in sales. And I'm like, this just got to be a better way. So I think that's, you know, was kind of my light bulb moment, uh, you know, four or five years ago saying, this is it, right? I mean, we are creatures of conversation. It's mm -hmm. just how do you get people into conversation is really the magic of whether or not something works or it doesn't. Totally understand that, man. And you know, um, I started selling back in 08. It was great. It was a great year to really get started in sales. Everything was tanking around us, right? I mean, but, and I was cranking out like 150 phone calls a day, getting hung up probably on about 100 of them, you know, or just getting voicemails, whatever. And it's like, I remember thinking like, man, I always wanted to, because I always love being around people. And, and now we have these tools, man, where it's just so much more, organically done you know and it doesn't have to be this pushy way of going about it and so you know could you kind of dive into the weeds a little bit about the difference between social selling and more like social media marketing i think that needs to be a little bit clear there i've heard you speak on it before yeah um you know uh, there's there's a uh, every time i say this i have a different um definition i would say <laughs> but you know um social selling is is the prospecting methodology for salespeople that uh, is called lead generation for marketers, right? I, I, this is the easiest way to say this. Um, when you think about sales, um, you think about outbound prospecting. And when you think about marketing, you think about inbound lead generation. But essentially what's happened is the, the lines have started to blur, right? But the difference is that you know, marketers have one objective and that objective is typically to create, you know, um, an experience around capturing somebody's data and slowly using um, a lot of different, you know, email and multi-channel approach to getting that lead to get onto a phone call, right? But typically they're not, it's, there's no outbound methodology in that. It's an inbound methodology. Well, social selling is, you know, salespeople taking all of these marketing assets and all these marketing um, insights and, and engaging with people the way that they would on a phone, right? So I look at it as more of like an outbound way of using marketing for salespeople to, to drive sales conversations. It makes tons a lot of sense, of the, man. A lot of the same components, but I mean, um, the objective for salespeople is they have to get people on the phone, they have to get the right people on the phone, and they have to put people through a sales process to get them to revenue. And, you know, the the old way of doing it and, and just leaning on marketing to do that all for you, those days are dead. Like you literally you can't do that anymore or you're going to have right. a really tough time. Um, you know, 80% of salespeople, there are 20% I would say that could probably cold call them their way into a sale for the next 10 years, right? But there's 80% um, of salespeople have to figure out you know, what are these new innovative ways that I can capture somebody's attention and, um, you know, get them into a conversation over time. And that there is marketing component involved in that. And unfortunately, that's the, the future of the world we live in. So whether you like it or not, marketing is part of a sales sales uh, process now. Man, so, you know, uh, I'm really glad to hear that because I want to pitch you this idea that I've been trying to sell a lot of sales guys on is that, man, you know, I just believe that podcasting is one of the best ways 
for us to kind of get in that conversation. Maybe we don't have to, you know, dominate and, and only talk to our actual customers, obviously, but just talking to thought leaders, people that are in the actual industry, trying to bring value to our actual network, however possible. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm like big on this pitch that I'm, I'm like super big on this pitch that most sales guys need to have some type of collaborative type of marketing approach, right? I mean, what's your whole takes on this? I, yeah, I, think a minim- <laughs> I think you should have a minimal marketing acumen, right? I mean, you, okay. you, you should find something that, what I think your, your example of a podcast is, is that you should find something that, that you find interesting sure. that you know you can, that other people get value out of. So I think that's why podcasting is such an easy um, way to start to build what I like to call visibility, right? So there's, yeah. there's three stages of social selling in my opinion. And that's, you know, uh, you first have to get visible, then you have to get valuable, and then you have to get connected. And that means online and offline, right? So the, mm-hmm. the kicker is most people can't figure out how to get offline. Um, and so you really have to make a commitment to this, but how do you get people to want to have a conversation with you? If you get visible, you get valuable and you get connected your chances. uh, And I don't, you know, I don't have any statistics on this. I'm sure I could go (laughs) find, you know, there's tons of fluffy statistics out there, but you know, I look at it this way. When I pick up the phone and I know somebody's watched one of my videos or multiple of my videos, um, they've listened to me on a podcast and I get them on the phone, I actually have some type of insights to have a conversation with them and say, yeah. you know, what did you think about that? I would love to get your opinion on that. And they're usually, you know, ten, nine out of 10 times, they're like, oh, they're kind of excited to talk to you. And that's because you kind of built like a digital relationship with them over time. And, you know, you're doing the same thing with your podcast, right? You got people on, you know, targeted buyers or, you know, just other people in your industry that you, you can learn from, right? And you can now get a lot of reach and spread and you can actually multiply your value, multiply your visibility by doing something that you love, which is creating this type of content. I mean, man, man, you know, so like that is probably the toughest part though, right? So people go out, they start making all this content like myself and you're in the trenches. You're trying to find out, you're really trying to find out how you can add value to the to your actual audience, anybody that's trying to tune in, anybody that's trying to follow you online. Um, and then how do you transition, I guess? What's your thoughts on trying to transition it offline? Because that's my biggest hurdle as well. So I'm being extremely selfish with that question. But yeah. uh, I would love to know your thoughts on that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is where it's kind of like prospecting, right? I mean, yeah. you have to look at the prospecting. I think what happens is most social, most Um, salespeople aren't creating enough content or the content they're creating is not talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're making a lot of connections. They're making a lot of friends, but they're not actually driving a lot of sales conversations because their content and their strategy is not geared around the actual buyers. I've gone through this, right? I mean, this isn't something that I'm I'm not talking about from experience. Um, So you, you have to start to, ask for stuff at a certain time. You know, you have to start to say, okay, I'm going to bring the right people onto my podcast, right? I want to bring somebody that could potentially be my customer on my podcast because I'm going to look at this as a way to start the relationship. And at some point, not right after my podcast, but at some point I'm going to reach out and use some of the insights from the conversation we had on my podcast and say, Hey, you know, I was thinking about this. Um, You know, you said something that was interesting and it's something I'd like to get your feedback on um, about what we're, what I'm doing, right? You know, we're helping companies do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, it sounds like from the conversation we had, this is something you have some experience on. And really, you know, getting offline to maybe get in the weeds and start asking them about, you know, what you're doing and, and what they think about it. And if the answer, if the right, if they give you the right answer, then you just ask them, you say, you know what, would you be open to just, um, you know, letting me compare the two options, like well, who are you using now, right? Mm-hmm. I think you, 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 you do earn the right to ask for something at some point. Most sales reps don't ever ask or they're not strategic about getting into that conversation. And if they were, they could probably look in their social networks and all, you know, certain people they've engaged with and say, okay, these are 10 people that could buy from me. I'm going to think of some strategic ways to not be, you know, just a beggar and say and, and leverage the insights from conversation to get into the offline sales conversation, um, and that's just smart sales. I mean, you know, 
you, you have to be strategic and start to think about these things. And if I think most salespeople did that, they actually would have some pretty fast offline conversations. Man, I really love that advice because it speaks to the idea of really targeting the right audience. And as you know, once it comes down to prospecting, just as you said, that's one of the biggest keys to it, right? I mean, obviously you have to have something of value to kind of bring to people. Um, but then you have to be talking to the right people. And, you know, when it comes to trying to come up with a nice content marketing strategy or even this um, type of social selling strategy, targeting the wrong people with that message will easily get you just kind of spinning in like circles, right? <laughs> you know, and you'll be pumping out tons of content for the wrong people. So I love that yeah. advice, man. And Much I think that, I think that mix the, the mixed thing is that you don't have to, you don't, you still don't have to do your outbound strategy. So, you know, what, what social selling is essentially doing is it's helping you get visible. It's helping you get valuable. And it's helping you get connected. But then there's the, the acumen that comes in of being able to pick up the phone and do a cold call. Right. And, I, and, right. and here's the thing is I've always said this, it's really easy to cold call people who already know who you are, or at least have an idea of who you are. Right. So yeah. your goal is to just, to just do enough and stay in front of them just, you know, once or twice or enough times where you can have the insights to know that that person's either listening to your podcast for your example, you know, they're engaging with some of your content online, but at some point, you know, even if they, you've never had a conversation with them, you can pick up the phone and say, Hey, you know, I noticed that you, you subscribed to my email list. You've been listening to my podcast. It just so happens that, you know, I looked at your title, I looked at your company and you know, we're working with one of your competitors, but before we get to that, you know, I would just like to ask you, you know, feedback on my podcast, like, you know, is this something you would listen to again? And, you know, who's your favorite guest, right? And, and, and try a couple of those different strategies, but you do have to pick up the phone and you do have to talk to people because there's not going to be any day in sales, in my opinion, where everybody's just going to raise their hand and say, I want to buy from you. You know, you still have to um, pair that with, you know, a, a solid outbound strategy and have some balls and ask for stuff. I mean, man, man, man you know, um, a lot of people say that cold calling is dead. A lot of these things are dead, but it's like, but, I think it's more along the lines of what you're speaking towards, which is the fact that it's not dead. They just have to be, have this 2.0 version of it. Right. Yep. Where you're not just kind of, you know, calling people off a list at random and hopefully that you kind of catch the right person and then trying to learn them, but you learn about them, you know, get some type of data on them and then reach out. Is what well, you're I think, you know, there's a short term social selling game, sure. which is, you know, I'm going to take my target accounts and um, you know, I'm going to either create content or share content and deliver it to those people um, and for those people for one solid reason, which is I want to get into a sales conversation or I want to get into their account or I want to grow their account. I want to keep retain them as a customer. But then there's the second layer, which is, are you a long-term sales? You know, what's your long-term goal, right? So there's a short-term social selling goal. There's a long-term social selling goal. My goal has always been in the beginning, it was short-term because I had to prove to a VP of sales who said to me, you know, if you want to sell this way, you have to hit quota, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I have no other choice. Then what I figured out was that there's two strategies. There's a short-term social selling game, and then there's a long-term social selling game, which is essentially you're building a personal brand and becoming a real expert in your field so that you don't have to beg for business anymore, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I think you have to break that down as a sales rep and say, okay, you know, here's what I'm going to do for the short term. and then you know, I'm going to make a commitment to this because in the long term, my objective is that I, I own the attention in this space and I own the conversation so that when somebody wants to have a conversation about, um, you know, uh, B2B sales technology, they're going to come to me or when I do call them, they're already going to know who I am and it'll be a simple conversation to do business with me. So, uh, you know, we're in this era of now where it's like, you got to start thinking for the long term because the sales reps who don't think for the long term, they will only be here for the short term or their life's going to be miserable playing the short term game with yeah. trying to beat everybody else who's, who's you know, invested two, three years into a podcast and building a personal brand and going to events and speaking and doing all that. Okay. Um, because most B2B sales are, are becoming, you know, even a, a simple B2B sale, in my opinion, this day and age is a complicated B2B sale, right? It's like, even if you're mm -hmm. going to go buy like a $19.99 um, email tool for the next, uh, you know, year that's month to month, it doesn't matter. There's so many out there. Now you're going, okay, I want to really dive in and do my research. We've done this internally, right? We were like, we, we um, looked at uh, 
all these outbound uh, email cold email tools. There's a hundred of them or a thousand of them, right? I mean, they all yeah. do something a little bit different. At the end of the day, they all kind of do the same thing, but they're all priced on different spectrums. So to make, you know, we ended up going with Mailshake um, was, was our final opportunity. But I think we spent a week between three or four of us testing different tools. So um, in my opinion, voice will be very, very good for B2C. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when you're just looking to buy something or go, you know, eat at a restaurant or, you know, go find a vet. Yeah, that thing is, that stuff's great. I just don't foresee it um, ever getting to the point where it's going to predict a B2B technology, even at the most minimal level. I love that, man. I mean, I mean, because, you know, um, it's been one of those things that I haven't talked to a lot of my buddies about. I was out of the country, we were talking and they're like, man, all this AI is coming out is it's going to take over B2B sales and all that fear shit. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so it's good to hear you kind of comment on that. Last comment. I'd love for you to just dive in maybe two, three minutes about the art of retargeting when it comes to running ads around some of the things that you're doing. Yeah. So um, this has been something that from a marketing perspective, I learned this from a marketing perspective because, you know, owning and running a digital agency, we do a lot of this for clients, right? So we're, you know, taking targeted ABM lists and we're from a brand perspective, we're socially surrounding people and delivering different types of content to different parts of the funnel, you know, and doing all these things. And you're like, okay, um, this, this is being successful here. Now imagine if you take your CEO and you start to retarget thought leadership, which is a huge thing we're doing right now. And I'm doing this, my, my, mm. my personal brand as well. For pennies on the dollar, you can stay in front of people to make sure that Everywhere they go, you're delivering some type of message that's going to help them personally and professionally, right? Or you're at least trying to. And, um, you know, from a sales perspective, uh, for $100 to $150 a month, a salesperson could create one to two minute videos. They could go on other people's podcasts like I'm going to do with yours. I'm going to take this podcast once it goes live and I'm going to run it on my Facebook page and I'm going to run an ad for, um, you know, three to five dollars a day for two weeks to all my LinkedIn connections on Instagram and Facebook. Then I'm going to, you know, if we have the video from this, I'm going to, you know, probably edit two to three square uh, videos that I'm going to run over um, in the next month and a half where I'm going to just target people for video views um, on Facebook and Instagram. Now on LinkedIn, I just do that organically. So, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter, I have a pretty big following already. So I'm doing that organically and getting a ton of engagement on it. The only thing I'm running ads on are Facebook and Instagram. But if you're new, you know, LinkedIn's too expensive. You should be doing that organically. You shouldn't be paying any ads on LinkedIn if you're a sales rep. But if you're new to Twitter, it's a great idea that you can set up for, you know, 50 bucks a month, a couple dollars a day, ads to your content, to your videos, and do it to your targeted account. You know, ex- export your um, target leads the email addresses from Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever CRM you're using, you can upload mm-hmm. that into the platform. So you can upload that into a Facebook ads platform. You can, uh, which also translates to, to Instagram and you can upload your email list of your prospects to your Twitter, Twitter ads account. Now that stuff takes time. That's something you'd have to, you have to learn a little bit over time. You're going to waste some money, but it's stuff that, you know, it takes minimal time once you have the skills to do it. And it's very effective because you got to start to look at getting multiple touches in on your prospects and, and then making phone calls, right? Then sending cold emails. You've got to have a multi-channel approach and the tools right now are amazing. And the people that take advantage of it, um, you're going to reap the rewards. There's no way around it. If you start to do it, the right strategy and putting the right content in front of the right people over time. Man, you know what? Thank you so much just for kind of laying that out because a lot of salespeople don't think about marketing tactics a lot. But, you know, as you're speaking towards it, I mean, the amount of technology that's out there for minimal. I've been trying to play around with this a little bit and I've been not spending more than like 100 bucks a month. I've gotten burned a lot. I've wasted like a shit ton just yeah. losing out on like choosing the wrong demos, the wrong activities behind it. But But I've gotten better. And so I've gotten more like, quality insights over time. So I think it's just something that more of us have to get into. So, um, man, I really love that, man. Yeah. I mean, you have a podcast, right? So like you yeah. can be driving, um, tons of people and then you can be retargeting 
um, that website traffic as well on Facebook and Instagram. So all the people that come and you know come to your page, you know, you want to make sure you stay in front of them so they keep watching podcast after podcast, right? And then you put together, um, eventually put together like your own ebook, right? Your top uh, 15 strategies for X, Y, and Z that, you know, and then retarget people with that to get them into your list. I mean, there's, um, you know, building an email list now for when you need it later is a very, very smart thing to do as a sales rep, especially if you're looking to stay in the same industry and you have the same type of buyers. You can, you know, that email list, if you use it correctly, can generate you a lot of money over time. Man, Jack, I'm not going to abuse any more of your time. I think you dropped more than enough, brother. You know what? Thank you so much for getting everything set up because uh, obviously Skype failed us. <laughs> but but either way, man, could you please plug how everybody can, can can definitely find you and learn more about everything that you're up to? Yeah. Um, so if you listen to this and you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you know, send me a message. Let me know you listen. I love to, you know, hear that people Listen, and I'll answer any questions that you might have if you're working on some of these strategies. And then we also have, um, so our agency, Creation Agency, we have a sub wing uh, called skillslab.io. And there we give away tons of free content on how to do all of these innovative marketing and sales strategies. Um, we have tons of free webinars in there with some of the top people doing amazing, you know, actual actionable work. And then we also have some courses there. So check it out. I think it's a great resource that you can use for free to really start to up your game. Jack, I, I can't thank you enough, man, just for kind of getting everything set up again. And thank you so much for your time, little brother. I think you dropped a ton of jewelry for these guys. So please go check out Skills Lab. I think I'm going to stop past her later on because there's some nuggets I want to glean from there as well. And I'll put all those links in the actual show notes. Thanks all again, right, man, though, Jack. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, appreciate it. All right, guys, and that's a wrap. So I had a lot of fun talking to Jack. He even challenged me to think about my strategies. And so let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Subscribe to it so you can stay tuned for more and more episodes. And, you know, you can reach me at joealexlemon.work or catch me on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Same thing, joealexlemon. Until next time, you guys be phenomenal.